<coughs> Hello, everyone. I hope you are doing well. Quick announcement. Soon, the Dao Yi website and the YouTube channel will be officially launched. Over the past year, I have been working with a few colleagues in Canada, the US, and China to prepare for the official launch of the non-profit organization. <coughs> Dao Yi stands for Daoist Art Organization International. As the first of many endeavors, Dao Yi started inviting martial art and energy art experts to contribute their experience and knowledge in the form of writing articles and video interviews. So far, we have received many article submissions and conducted many interviews with experts. We will begin publishing these materials on the Dao Yi website and the YouTube channel starting next week. We are only getting started. It's going to be a long journey and we would like you to join us. If you are interested, please contact us and we will be more than happy to work with you. Again, Dao Yi is a non-profit organization created for the entire community. It is not meant to be a platform for my own teaching. Yes, I'm a member of the core Dao Yi team, but I'm only the facilitator for Dao Yi's activities. The traditional arts such as internal martial arts, energy arts, TCM, and uh, other practices are beneficial to all of humanity and Dao Yi strives to do its best to practice, promote, and preserve them. So, Dao Yi is for all of us. I invite you to be a part of it. More details about how you can participate will be announced soon. Stay tuned for updates. Now, let's get on with today's topic. In last week's video, I introduced Yi Xing Yan Qi, the first of three stages of Qi Gan practice, an advanced topic related to energy training in the internal style of martial arts. Today, I will introduce stage two of Qi Gan practice, Yi Qi Dai Xing. But first, let's warm up with Dao De Jing commentary and Xiu Dao. Today's term is Xu Ji Jing Du, a key concept from chapter 16 of the Dao De Jing. In the 15th chapter of the Dao De Jing, talked about in last week's video, Lao Zi introduced the characteristics of a Dao expressed by the term Wei Miao Xuan Tong or subtle, exquisite, divine, fathomed. Then Lao Zi outlined how people should act by following the Great Tao. Many important Taoist terms that have been used in history can be found in this chapter. Furthermore, the term Xu Ji Jing Du is the one of them. Xu means emptiness, Ji means absolute, ultimate, Jing means static, stillness, and Du means preserve, maintain. Put together, it means to follow the Tao. One has to seek to attain absolute emptiness and preserve a state of perfect stillness. Then, Lao Zi talked about his outlook toward the changing of the world by saying, Wan Wu Bing Zuo, Wu Yi Guan Fu. End quote. Translation See how all things come into being, and I observe how they return. End translation. Here, Lao Zi used the word Guan O observe to express his non-action or Wu Wei approach. Then, Lao Zi explained the reason behind his Wu Wei approach to dealing with changes with the 
translated code. Things flourish, then each returns to its root. Returning to the root is called stillness. Stillness is called return to life. Return to life is called the constant. Knowing the constant is called enlightenment. End translated quote. Here, Lao Tzu introduced Gui Gen Fu Ming, another important term used in Taoism. Gui means return, Gen means root, Fu means return to, and Ming means original nature. Put together, Gui Gen Fu Ming means return to the root of life and the original nature. Then, Lao Tzu talked about how to act by following the Tao. In other words, how to choose the right Ren Dao or the Tao of humans to follow the Tian Dao or the Tao of heaven. In the end, Lao Tzu concluded that chapter by saying, quote, Dao nai jiu, mu shen bu dai, end quote. Translation, this way is everlasting, not endangered by physical death. End translation. Here, Lao Tzu distinguished between the Tao and the physical body. The physical body can die, but Tao is everlasting. A fundamental concept of Taoism regarding the spirit and the physical body. Now, let's talk about how to apply this chapter, especially Xu Ji Jing Du in Xiu Dao practice. In Xiu Dao practice, we have to identify the root of life, which is the prenatal energy. So, how should you practice it? In other words, how should you refine prenatal energy in order to return to the root of life? Well, practitioners can cultivate the prenatal energy in order to return to the root of life through Xuanguan or Mystery Gate. Then the question becomes, how to make the Xuanguan or Mystery Gate emerge? The solution is today's term Xu Ji Jing Du or to attain absolute emptiness and preserve a state of perfect stillness. So, to reach the level of a mystery gate emergence, a practitioner has to follow the Xu and the Jing or emptiness and tranquility. Emptiness is the method to reach tranquility and tranquility is the result of emptiness. Both of these factors are intertwined. Therefore, Xu and Jing or emptiness and tranquility are two very important terms used in Xiu Dao practice in order to reach the prenatal energy state. That's why I have emphasized in many prior videos that Taoist Xiu Dao practice is the static approach based on practice, a reverse flow of a movement compared to our daily life. In practice, any intentional intervention by the mind in the energy refinement process goes against the fundamental Taoist principles and cannot be considered Taoist style of practice. To summarize, Lao Tzu in the 16th chapter of Tao Te Ching introduced some very important Taoist concepts that have been used in practice for more than 2000 years, and they are still relevant in guiding our practice and daily life. With that, let's move on to today's main topic, Yi Qi Dai Xing, the second stage of the three-stage energy practice for martial art training. Topics covered in today's video include First, 
qi gan in qi gong and the martial art practice review. Second, further explanation of the three stage energy practice. Third, how to practice yi qi dai xing. Fourth, misperception. Fifth, demonstration. And sixth, takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1 Qi Gan in Qi Gong and the Martial Art Practice Review. First things first, this video builds upon two prior videos Internal Style Concept 11 and the Sensation Qi Gan, published over two years ago, as well as last week's video titled Internal Style Concept 72. Qi Gan Stage 1 Yi Xing Yan Qi. Links to both are in the description. I highly recommend watching them both if you haven't already. Before proceeding with this video, with that said, let's now briefly review Qi Gan in the context of both Qi Gong and martial arts. In last week's video, I briefly introduced the difference between Qi Gan or energy sensation practiced in Qi Gong for health and Qi Gan in martial arts training. I also explained that the term Qi Gan originated in Qi Gong practice back in the 1980s and was later adopted by the martial art community. Even though Practitioners of both Qi Gong and martial art communities used the same term. The function and objective of a practice are different. Speaking from observation, many people in the martial arts community nowadays do not experience any energy sensation in their practice. Some people falsely believe that Qi Gan gained through Qi Gong practice can be used in martial art practice as well. These reasons have made the research and the practice of Qi Gan in martial art training a very esoteric topic in the community. This has been the situation for the last few decades in China and it's no surprise that the wise is in the same boat. So, please make sure to watch the Qi Gan introduction video as well as last week's video on Yi Xing Yan Qi, the stage 1 of Qi Gan. To summarize, Qi Gan practice in Qi Gong and the internal style of martial arts utilize different approaches even though the same Chinese characters are used for the term in both practice. Like I have said many times that any attempt to substitute a practice with a totally different one, for example, using Qi Gan in Qi Gong to replace Qi Gan in martial arts will be a waste of time. Now, let's move on to the next topic to have a quick review of the three stage energy practice. Topic 2 Further explanation of the three stage energy practice. After noticing the confusion surrounding the term energy used in martial arts, Xiu Dao, and many other fields of practice, I developed the three stage energy practice method for martial artists to develop qi gan or energy sensation. As explained in last week's video, the term energy used in martial art practice means energy flow occurring during martial art training. The objective of creating this three stage method is to introduce the systematic solution to deal with energy sensation and related martial movements that can serve as the reference and guide guidance for practitioners of both internal and external styles. These three stages are first, Yi Xing Yan Qi, 
use the body to attract the qi. It's planned in last week's video. Second, yi qi dai xing. Use the qi to lead the body. Topic of uh, today's video. And third, lian shen he qi. Train the mind and integrate the qi. Will be explained next week. So, this three stage method is a solution to develop internal sensation or energy flow used in martial art practice. I can't emphasize this enough. A practitioner should follow the three stages in sequence for best results. In other words, you should move to the next stage only after mastering the previous stage, or else it will not work as expected. This is an advanced practice and it should be practiced in the right order. At the same time, even after you master all the three stages of a practice, you still need to come back to practice the lower stages every so often in order to refine them further. It is especially important when you are working on new techniques in martial art training. Even though energy sensing ability goes beyond any specific technique, any energy sensing ability cannot exist without a martial art movement, the carrier of a martial technique. So, utilizing the three-stage method to practice Qi Gan when working on new martial techniques is the good way to not only refine the energy flow ability, but also to strengthen the effect of the integration of physical movement and energy sensation. This is an important point, which I hope you will apply in your training. As for other principles, I will elaborate on them in next week's video. Then, how to practice the second stage? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3. How to practice Yi Qi Dai Xing In last week's video, I introduced Yi Xing Yan Qi, the first stage of Qi Gan practice. Today it's time to talk about the second stage, Yi Qi Dai Xing, or use the Qi to lead the body. As also emphasized in last week's video, please pay special attention to the verbs used in each sentence. For example, the verb in last week's video was Yan, which means attract, draw, reflecting the nature of the first stage practice. In the first stage, energy sensation is triggered by physical movement. So, we use physical movement to attract energy flow. In the first stage, even though the goal is energy sensation, the priority is physical movement, which includes single exercises forms and uh, routines. But in Yi Qi Dai Xing, the second stage and also today's main topic, the emphasis is on the verb Dai or lead. Here, Yi means with, Qi means energy or energy sensation, Dai means lead, guide, and Xing means the physical form or movement. It is worth noting that even though by nature, energy is both physical as well as a part of a physical phenomenon, in order to differentiate the purely physical movement from the energy sensation accompanying a physical movement. I use two terms, energy sensation and physical movement, to express the two categories of focus in practice. In other words, the term physical movement and the term energy sensation are not 
polar opposites, but in reality, they are intertwined and interdependent in energy related practice. It's only for the sake of classification that I'm using these two terms separately in meaning. Now, let's talk further about the second stage, Yi Qi Dai Xing. Having understood the meaning of this term, how do you actually practice it? Let me explain. The overall principle of this stage is that, after developing a strong energy flow sensation through martial art movement training in the first stage, practitioners should now pay more attention to the energy sensation instead of the physical form in the second stage. During practice, Practitioners should let the energy sensation lead the physical movement. To practice this, energy sensation should first and foremost exist, then let the energy sensation move first. It may seem as if there are two bodies, one is the physical body and the other is the energy body. The energy body moves before the physical body. The physical body following the energy sensation created by the energy body. The time difference between the movement of the energy body and the physical body may be small enough to be normally considered insignificant. Regardless, the physical body moves after the energy body. This is a very advanced practice, requiring a lot of effort for mastery. It is very important to know that the forward movement of the energy body is not a mere imagination or visualization, but actual energy sensation. The result of the movement of the energy body should be substantial. In other words, you first have to feel the energy sensation and only then can you let the energy body lead the movement of the physical body, or else that will be incorrect practice. So, the ability to project the energy body out of your physical body is the key factor here. Of course, nothing can be gained in just a short while, so keep at it. Now, let me further explain Yi Qi Dai Xing using one movement each from the three internal styles. Xing Yi, let's take Pao Quan or the Fire Fist as an example. Every time your hands move forward, you should first build the energy sensation by projecting the energy movement, and then the hand will follow the energy movement. When the hands move forward, it's as if your physical hands are chasing the energy hands with sensation. When the hands withdraw backward towards the body. Energy movements should act first and then physical hands move backward toward the place that the energy hands have created. Even in the last movement, the punching movement, the physical hand will still follow the energy hand movement. You have to practice this method slowly in the beginning and gradually move faster and faster. Eventually, you will be able to move fast and still have an energy sensation. Next, Tai Chi. Let's use the beginning form to illustrate this practice since different styles of Tai Chi have different forms, but they all share the same beginning form. 
when the hands move upward from the side of the body. The hand should not move upward before the energy sensation has been built up. Once the energy sensation is present, move the energy arms slowly and at the same time have the physical arms follow the energy arms. It is very important to pay special attention before the hands are about to move downward after moving upward. The physical hands first have to pause and let the energy hands change direction and move downward. Later, the physical hands follow the downward moving energy hands. The small pause of the physical hand movement is important here. You should not move your hands downward before the energy hands are already in the downward motion. Next, Ba Gua. Let's take the single changing palm or Dan Huan Zhang as an example. In the Dan Huan Zhang practice, the extended palm we first move backward toward the body from the Qinglong Tanjua posture. Then the same hand push outward in a downward semicircle. You can see that the hand is making a circle in the first two movements of Dan Huan Zhang. So, to practice the second stage, you have to make sure that the energy hand is making a circle after the energy sensation built up and before the physical hand movement, and then use the energy sensation to lead your physical hand along the circle. It may seem as if your physical hand is being pulled by the energy hand in making the circle, which reflects the second stage of this energy practice method. Again, let the energy hand move first with the physical hand following the energy sensation. That should give you a basic idea of how to practice Yi Qi Dai Xing or using the Qi to lead the body in each of the three internal styles. As it's planned in last week's video about the applicability of the first stage practice to all internal style movements, the same is true for the second stage practice as well. You can also have noticed that the mind or mental focus plays a key role in this practice, bridging the physical movement with the energy sensation. Also, it is worth noting that the mental focus should be just the right level, neither too strong nor too weak. Neither of them will lead to the ideal result of that stage. So, being able to reach the ideal level of mental focus in that practice is a key factor as well. You need to experience it yourself in order to find the right level of mental focus. I will introduce some of them in the future. So, are there any misperceptions about this rarely mentioned practice? Of course, that brings us to the next topic. Topic 4. Misperception. Yi Qi Dai Xing, or use the Qi to lead the body, is an advanced topic. To my knowledge, there has been no in-depth discussion about it in the community so far, including China and overseas. Regardless, misperception still exists about the practice. For example, some people who have a prior energy sensation experience try to apply the same approach in martial art practice, which is incorrect. Let me explain. Yes, it is normal that when practicing any energy sensation related practice, speed of a movement is important. Very often, when the movement becomes faster, 
then the energy sensation will disappear, which requires us to start slow and gradually become fast in practice. If you can only experience the energy sensation when the movement is slow, but the sensation disappears with the faster movement, it implies you need to make more efforts in practice. Energy sensation should be there no matter fast or slow movements. So, applying the Qi Gong method to develop energy sensation skill in martial art practice is incorrect. Martial art practice has its own principles and paths to reach higher levels, which just cannot be replaced by the Qi Gong approach. To summarize, if you aim to reach the good level of energy practice in the internal style of martial arts, you have to adopt the right martial art approach, which differs from the Qi Gong approach. Now, let me show you a quick demonstration of Yi Qi Dai Xing practice in the demonstration section. Topic 5 Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate Yi Qi Dai Xing, the second stage of the three stage energy practice method with Xing Yi Pao Quan or the fire-faced movement. I will intentionally demonstrate this movement slowly so that the right body structure suitable to energy sensation training can be clearly illustrated. The fire-faced movement Topic 6 Takeaways First, Qi Gan in Qi Gong and the Martial Art Practice Review. Qi Gan practice in Qi Gong and the internal style of martial arts utilize different approaches, even though the same Chinese characters are used for the term in both practices. Second, further explanation of the three stage energy practice. The three-stage method should be practiced in sequence. At the same time, even after you master all the three stages of practice, you still need to come back to the practice the lower stages every so often in order to refine them further. Third, how to practice Yi Qi Dai Xing. After developing a strong energy flow sensation through martial art movement training gained in the first stage. Practitioners should now pay more attention to the energy sensation instead of the physical form. During practice, practitioners should let the energy sensation lead the physical movement. Fourth, misperception. Some people who have a prior energy sensation experience try to apply the same approach in martial art practice. Remember, this is a misperception. Every practice has its own approach, and you need to adopt the relevant approach for any practice. Make sure to check out the demonstration to get a more visual idea of Yi Qi Dai Xing practice and try to apply it in your own practice, of course, after practicing the first stage, Yi Xing Yan Qi. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.